his record stands at 33 wins, 5 losses, with 19 wins. Coming by way of knockout, going to be the IBF junior middleweight champion of the world, with a record of 22 wins, 5 losses, 2 draws. Ini bermain boxer dengan yang kurang begitu uh, lincah sehingga uh, partai ini akan menjadi partai yang kontradiktif di antara kedua petinju ini dalam hati style masing-masing dan yang menjadi uh, kekurangan dari memenangkan satu pertandingan ya kita lihat baru saja anda uh, singgung sudah dibuktikan ya, di atas satu ring bulan Johnny setiap ya. kanan ini kencang <laughs> ya luar biasa jadi walaupun 41 tahun tapi dia bulan Januari kemarin masih memenangkan satu pertandingan melawan Joel Hernandez dan itu dimenangkan dengan uh, unanimous decision artinya pertandingan selama 12 ronde artinya dia mempunyai uh, stamina ya, yang luar biasa. masih masih cukup kuat di usia 41 tahun terima kasih Bung Johnny kita langsung saksikan ronde pertama live dan eksklusif tepatnya dari Oasis Hotel Kompleks Cancun Quintana Pro Meksiko inilah dia partai puncak yang kami hadirkan lebih awal dari biasanya antara Carlos Molina berhadapan dengan Cornelius Bandris didukung oleh Evercoast LV Twy see the inside before you decide selamat menyaksikan Coming the first Detroit world champion since you know who, Tommy Hearns. Unbelievable, isn't it? And, and to be honest, using the jab very well so far. Bundridge. And Molina just struggling at the moment just to find a, a clean target. And he certainly started off looking sharp here, Bundridge. Earned this uh, title shot with a, a good points win over Joey Hernandez in January, a 12 rounder, which he won emphatically and he's boxing nicely here in this opening period of this 12 rounder for this IBF light middleweight title. Stop, stop, stop. You stay stop, stop. Here. Okay, and this go. pace is super ambitious, isn't it? I think Molina needs to fight at a higher pace from the offset. Oh, great shot! And he walked straight into that Molina and there's no doubting about that one. Excellent right hand, nice short right hand, but Molina walked on to him, he's still in stage on his legs. Well, the referee's not going to be stopping this one in a hurry, I don't think. Mexican fighter in front of a Mexican crowd. Bundridge almost sprints across the ring and trying to get right onto him. 15 seconds remaining, can he find another big shot? Oh, and the referee stopping him, stopping him in mid-action, accusing him of dragging his opponent onto the punches, and Molina is going to see it through to end the foul ending a dramatic well, he's, he's crossing everything behind that long left jab isn't he Bundridge I'm oh, sorry about not giving well, Melina not giving Bundridge a chance to set himself by keeping a high work with but Bundridge using the jab not allowing Melina to really amount any sort of any sort of attack work that's worthwhile straight low but he's having some success with the body shots as well and Molina looks as though he just wonder a little bit watching him here at this early stages of the fight and he obviously has been down in the opening round but every time Bundridge looks to unload with power shots Molina looking really uncertain yeah and, and more, more than to say scared he looks like he doesn't know what to do isn't he? he's a sit set kind of suspect that Bundridge might not get too many favours from the judges but he won the first round hugely that's got to go down as a 10-8 round and Molina's not done an awful lot this round although he did get through with the right hand there and that gets a little bit of a, a little bit of a buzz from his supporters but that's pretty much the only clean shot he's landed with isn't it in this round and possibly even in the first again, Jab again be next hasn't it that Jack was Oh, and a good right hand again there from Bundridge. It's all over the place again, Barry. Every time, every time Bundridge seems to connect to a shake of the head there from Molina. Well, that, that by Sangroff win, that's it, that's it. That's great, isn't it? Because, you know, he's going to be a, a, a light, light middleweight middle champion, isn't he? WBO champion by Sangroff, you know, and, and at the time, probably would, I never really heard of him at the time, but in hindsight, that was a, a tremendous win. Again, with the right hand there, Bundridge. And our stats man as well, 
tells us that were Bunbridge to win this, he would he would become the oldest world light middleweight champion. Good shot. Really solid left hand dug into the body by Bunbridge. Because Molina is so, uh, Bunbridge having so much success with the jab, first of all, well, because Molina is so wary of that right hand, he, he, can, he can use that left hook there, he can fake, as he did there, but he can fake the right hand. Because Molina will go into his shell, and then he opens up the bodies with the left hook, nice little combination there again, and Bunbridge. And Molina got to start throwing in combinations. He's, he's missing with these one twos, these single shots. So there, missing by a wide margin with that attempted overhand right. And again, just swinging through thin air with the left hook. And even if he's not going to throw punches, you know, put pressure on Bunger with your feet, make him make Bunger work hard. That's a good right hand though for Molina at last. And the first one. It's made Bundridge blink a little. Molina not a big single puncher. Good win earlier in his career against Kermit Sintron. Chance from the Mexican crowd. But Molina needs to faint his way in. Too far out, just need to get forward a little bit short, so a little faint in first. Need to basically see that little half a step forward, then let the punches go. Molina maybe will be thinking that further the fight goes, that maybe fitness is going to be on his side, that he might be able to outwork Bundridge in the latter stages if he can get that far. Well, you would think so, but he hasn't set a high pace, has he? He hasn't set a high tempo, really. No, Bunger's not doing much, but no, it's Molina. That's good for Molina, wasn't he? He landed with the right hand first and two left over the top. I've got to be honest, Bunger looks like he's tough in it, doesn't he? He does. Both open just a little bit. Yep. And we're only in the fourth. Has he perhaps been trying to load up? with those big right hands and maybe that's taken something out of him already and it's still a relatively early stage. <laughs> Left hand again, low. Ruff's not been too worried about that though, it's the holding of Bundridge that he's ticked him off about on a couple of occasions. Enough for me for Bundridge to be tough in the way he was in the corner. Into the fifth, and Molina on our cards, narrowing the gap by taking the fourth round. He was on the floor in the opening round, caught by that right hand from Bundridge. Awful start then for the champion. Can he now continue to narrow the gap? the veteran in the black shorts K9 that's his nickname I tell you what John he's just Bunge looks, he almost looks spent doesn't he it's real I was just going to say it's, it's a spent. while since he's landed anything worthwhile all of a sudden he's pushing his punches out, not throwing them. And Molina not capitalising on it is yet in this round. And then he's still getting through with plenty of jabs, which has been, except for the right hand that dropped, Molina has been his best weapon.
couple of minutes. Bunbridge has had the edge. Lena needs a good last minute now. Yeah, he's had the edge, you're right, but there's not much to be either, is there? Lena just allowing himself to, uh, to coin one of the old uh, boxing statements to be old manned out of it. Chopping right hand and then the swinging left from Bunbridge did get through. Body shot there from Bunbridge as well with Molina on the, in the corner. Molina did a lot better in the fourth, but he's not been able to build on it. You see Bunbridge trying, trying to draw him on, isn't he? Trying to draw him on that right hand again with the left hand, though, encouraging him to, to commit from too far out. again is on Bundridge's case oh, it's, terrible, isn't it? it's time saying don't leave it out there in other words don't just prod with your left hand don't push with your left hand but I mean it's a it's a nitpicking sort of judgment isn't it no, he's wanted for really really something that you know the whole industry has been half and half so maybe Bundridge's been more to blame but it has been too bad but not wanted for the low blows and there's been plenty of them from Bundridge better from, from Molina. The Bundy's missed in between, he threw punches and combinations and threes. And I think that's what he has to do all the time. Double up the jab. He's trying to pop chop from range, isn't he? Good jab there from I get the impression that the referee is looking for an opportunity, maybe, to further caution Bundridge. Quite sternly on a oh, couple stop, of occasions stop. already. Leave his head alone. Leave him alone. Let's go. Come around. I'm sure Bundy said probably keep his punches up. <laughs> this is quite dynamic. Messi now, as we're nearing the halfway. Molina just has to throw more punches. It's, it's not even like, not, it's not even lots of technical things that he has to change. He just has to throw more punches, that's it. You don't know anybody when you went back into the old boxing days, Barry. Somebody who just grinned at you as he fought. <laughs> Everyone, I boxed you. <laughs> Literally. I, Peter Judson was calling me names for 12 rounds. I was like, I He's in the building game now, Peter Judson. He's a tough man, he really was. Not because I, I couldn't hurt him, I couldn't hurt anybody, but he was a tough man. Oh, good right hand. Solid body shot from Bundridge. And right hand over the top there. Molina coming in with the head. <laughs> Bundridge not impressed. But the referee was looking at Bundridge to try and think what he could warn him for. Molina's boxing like a man who's scared. It's not a very nice thing to say about a wild fighter, he does not a committee at all. Well, every time, every time Dunbridge unloads, that's what we were saying in the second, third round, wouldn't it? Every time he, every time he launches an attack, Molina goes in almost into panic mode. Yeah, but I've been in fights, but I, you know, my last fight, I got battered from Philip Toast, got down, but when the two rounds that I stayed on my feet, you grew from confidence, thinking, actually, I can stay up these shots. And you have a go, until you get put down again, obviously, but... I mean, they've shown so far to be quite resilient to everything that's been thrown his way since the lockdown. They're still fight, fight like a man's a little bit, a little bit timid in his work. Now, if he needs some uh, 
pro Mexican judges to be making a case for him winning this fight at this stage. And again, complaints from Bundridge about Molina using his head. Good job there again from Bundridge. Should be being put on him by Molina, is it? Yeah, he's just, he's just marching forward but without any intent. Every, t every time uh, Bundridge cocks that right hand, Molina looks a little bit, a little bit timid. Division, of course, the one dominated by Sal Alvarez. He's the one top of the tree. Imagine what Alvarez would do to Molina. Yeah, but that's the thing, John. The, the, these guys, are, you know, there's a golden goose in your weight. So you've got to hold them a form. There's a, there's a guy in your weight that you could possibly get a, get a unification fight with, maybe, if you were lucky. And anyway, it's a world title fight. You know, you gotta, if you've done so many rounds, you've got to try and go out and win that fight by all, by all means necessary. Yeah. Molina he hasn't, hasn't really looked like his title means as much as it, as it, did, as it does for all other fighters. Bundridge may be just taking a bit of a breather in this eighth round. Scored the seventh to Bundridge, did he? Yeah, it did, yeah. It, it, it won the chin in again. But I just think the, the better, the heavier shot, the better shot comes on him. So on your card then still, only the fourth round going to the champion, Molina. Good right hand there again from Bundridge. Again, these rounds, there's nothing in these rounds. Good jab there from Molina and, and a good right hand from Bundridge and not much happening. Oh, he's hurting there, John. He's caught, he's caught, and he's backpedalling. Looks as though he's been stunned, lands the left hand off the ropes, but it's Bundridge who's unloading here and wants... Well, now, what's the referee doing this time? Well, listen, that, was a good sh that was a good shot. Got a point. Oh, well, that is nonsense. That is nonsense, Barry. Bundridge corner are furious and he's had a point taken away. No. I don't know, I don't know what happened there. You saying that he held him by the back of the head and hit him, did really? All I could see was maybe that right hand might just be relatively low, but even that looked good to me. I, I don't think it was anything to do with the, a low blow. He was talking about him dragging him onto punches. Oh, he's caught there though. That's a nice right hand from Molina. Nice yeah, little fight back here from Molina. No. Now we're seeing the guy who wants to win. Oh, good shot again. And Molina's in trouble. Molina's in real trouble. The bell's about to go, and he needs it to go. He's out on his feet. Body shot took its toll. And where are the judges getting these extra seconds from? This round should be over, and it is now. Motion replays. Maybe the referee had his point. But he's looking for it. That's the thing, isn't he? He's, he's looking for things to, to complain about with Bundridge. So got Bundridge a mile ahead of points. Oh, he's, he's got a massive, even if you give a cut around to, to Molina, he's still a while ahead. Oh, really good job the referee's not scoring the fight. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Now, what's the problem this time? Oh, I've got a little bit of uh, loose binding once more. It's a good, isn't it? Here's what the crowd make of it. Well, to be honest, it's definitely doing there. Uh, is he going to lose his title? Well, he's got to come with, he's got to take a lot of pressure over the world work, hasn't he? He's trying to claw back the, the deficit. He's got to have real big rounds from here on in, Molina, you would suspect. Well, he showed flash of it, didn't he? After being hurt with that right hand. We come back and I, 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 well, I think he, you know, he shot Bundy with that right hand through, right, right through the guard and, and put the pressure on him before he got hit with the body shot. It's almost as though he just doesn't have you know, the belief in his own ability to take the Bundy shot. That's more like it. It's the timing zone, isn't it? When he does. And that's sometimes when you're a bit lethargic. And that's, I wonder whether he's made the weight wrong. And that's usually a case. And he has, as we said before the fight began, he's been out of action for 13 months. Hardly a lifetime, but it's longer than most fighters would wish. Well, definitely. It's 
psychological as well, because you win a world title, you want to cash in on it, and not being able to do that, it you know, must have been a little bit depressing for him. Round this one, a messy round. Yeah, it is. Kurt Molina felt the weight of that left hand, even though he kept on coming, trying to wing in speculative punches in these closing seconds. There's a left hand which does get through, missed with the and Bundridge on our cards. Unless Molina has three really big rounds, looks as though he could be heading to regaining his title. Well, for me, there was this like, three rounds where I could easily give the Molina. But apart from that, it's been all Bundridge. And he could still be a mile ahead. And if I think it's... Oh, nice little feint there from Bundridge and a jab. But again, that right hand over the top. Just troubling Molina. Here come the big right hands again. Bundridge fans up on their feet. Him with those body shots as well, Barry. Yeah, it was all in the middle of the ring. It's a right hand over the top, just behind the guard, back of the ear again. I think that, that made Molina retreat. Bundridge, just when you think that he's slumped in his corner, looking as though he's just about spent, finding from somewhere more reserves of energy. But Molina looks like he's got plenty of energy. Oh, good right hand there. Which if he's, not, he's just not doing enough work. Plenty of energy, maybe you could argue not enough ability, he's just not getting yeah. into position to land the shot. Just missing with that right hand there, Molina. At least he his hands go there. That's, that's the positive sign in that little exchange. Coverage complaining to the referee that Molina using the head. And there he goes in with it again. already he's had one point deducted and the referee giving a bit of an old-fashioned look as he went in to separate them that time there's oh. another solid right hand from Bundridge Molina, oh, Molina the welt to stay up from that oh he's down binding is loose on that left glove of Bundridge but it doesn't matter Molina down he says it wasn't a knockdown but it's been given as one got up too soon there I think so can Bundridge now finish it off here in this 10th round? Binding on that left hand, coming really loose again. This isn't a deliberate plunge remaining in this 10th. Gonna punch from distance though, Bundridge with that right hand. He's getting, he's getting too close with the follow-up attacks. Just about recovered now, seemingly. A good right hand there from Molina. When he's hurt, he fights back. Not able to find a real big shot, though, in those closing seconds. And then... said Barry potentially big money fights could be somewhere down the line for whoever wins this one easier to make if it turns out to be Bundridge because there's no guarantee I don't think that Molina would be let back into the United States anytime yeah, course, soon yeah. oh, sorry, Jack, there Bundridge just trying to be a little too cute for his own good pay for it Rose trick from uh, Bundridge. Oh, that's a good right hand. Molina taking it though this time. 
again because he's trying to his distance right. He leaves his jab, he's falling short with it, bringing it back low. Predominantly Mexican, of course, very subdued. It's the handful of travelling fans cheering on Cornelius Bundridge, who believe that their man is about to regain the title. He is, isn't he? <laughs> He's down with all the, all the shots of the that come from Bundridge. You can't make any sort of an argument for Molina having done enough to even make this one close. Not at all, you know, you could, I would say it's been about three rounds that I could have made it the other way. Walk straight into a right uppercut again there, Molina. <laughs> oh, if he's a if he's our Heyman fighter, I'm going to bet by three rounds there. What are you trying to say, Barry? <laughs> the lawyers are listening. <laughs> it is really bad. I wouldn't sell his glove. I can't think in my... Uh, year or two of watching boxing that I've ever seen a, that I've ever seen a point deducted for that but I, I guess in theory it could happen yeah. and Molina again not fighting like a man who, who's going to lose his world title well, he's got to go in there and really risk everything now in these closing seconds head going in and uh, Bundridge making absolutely certain that the referee realises that that's the case well Molina trying to force the fight a little bit now in this job but again there's no no thought beyond his work he's coming forward he's, and he's, he's only got no move, good move on his heel toe isn't he on the balls his feet no feint no fluency in his, in his footwork twice in the opening round and in the tenth and as the seconds tick down in the final round of what has really been a surprising contest in that Bundridge has been so much the dominant fighter it looks as though the American is surely going to take the title I think Bundridge has boxed well tonight and I think, and I think Molina's boxed very poor Old manning his way through these closing stages again, holding on and just eating up a few more seconds. He's box smart, isn't he, Bundy? He'll use the jab well, he not just stop any sort of attack that Molina would try, try to mount. He'll look for his rest, he's can certainly change direction. No real game plan from Molina, has there? No, even, even coming forward, he's just a little bit too close to work, isn't he? So when he does get close, he's smothered in his own words. He's frustrating the night for Molina. So last ten seconds, Molina desperately looking for the big punch to somehow turn it round. Hundreds landing a switch. Surely there can be no argument that he has taken the title here. A look of resignation in the Molina corner. Sejak awal kedua petinju ini terlibat dalam pertarungan yang ya cukup brutal. Walaupun Bandits ini sudah berusia 41 tahun, tapi dia masih bisa bertahan konsisten selama 12 ronde. Walaupun kondisinya sudah sangat-sangat kritis, tapi dia masih mampu mengeluarkan pukulan-pukulan yang mengumpulkan poin dan juga mencegah serangan daripada Molina. Sehingga dalam penilaian saya, ini secara angka memang masih umur Carlo Cornelis Bandres ini. Tapi kita tidak tahu karena ini bermain di Meksiko, selalu ada saja faktor tuan rumah.
Roma itu mempunyai nilai yang lebih daripada yang kamu ya. Oke. Okay. Kemudian Kedari, kalau soal itu saya uh, tahan dulu. Saya mohon maaf saya potong karena kalau sudah soal tuan rumah biasanya mungkin negara uh, punya punya nah, punya penilaian tersendiri. <laughs> tersendiri karena dari awal Anda berdua sudah perbincangan off air saat menyaksikan Luar biasa, kemenangan yang diperoleh 